So seed collecting. Uh, a lot of us uh, like to do it. There may be very good reasons for doing it to keep uh, a variety going that is difficult to get hold of from seed or simply to save money. Uh, or indeed it also gives the opportunity to collect sometimes potentially really quite large amounts of seed which you can then use for you know, really dramatic effects. So I'm standing here with Larkspur, uh, lovely deep blue cottage garden annual. Uh, as you can see they get, they get quite big which is probably one reason why they're not as popular as they used to be. Uh, but they are very easy from seed particularly on light soils. You can sow them in the autumn and they'll grow through the winter uh, and they'll start to flower in, in early summer. Uh, seed collecting is usually pretty easy, um, not always, but uh, this is a nice example of one that uh, is, is a good place to start because we, we can, the seed is very visible and it's quite easy to, to collect. So if we look down at the top of the open seed capsules we can see they're quite dark inside and that's the, that's the seed in, inside. Uh, some seed heads disperse their seed really quickly. Um, Larkspurs are quite decent, they hang on to it for quite some time which does make life easier uh, collecting it. So if we then hold it upside down, tap, then we can see the seed. And just uh, taking seed out, uh, a few experimental uh, pods does give you an idea really realistically how much uh, we can collect. So why am I standing uh, behind a dead cabbage plant? Well this is a good example of uh, why you really need to keep an eye on the plants you want to collect seed from because some things disperse their seed really quickly. Uh, this is a it's a kind of stir-fry mustard green uh, called dragon's teeth which we really rather like. Uh, it's quite hard to get hold of commercially and so a really good example of the kind of thing a lot of people like to save seed from. Uh, and I remember a couple of months ago it was uh, it has flowered, had lots of green seed pods, and I remember breaking open a seed pod and seeing that the seed wasn't ripe. We then went away for the weekend, got back, and on Monday I was greeted by a ghost, a plant that had over the weekend matured its seed pods and just distributed the whole lot, and there wasn't a single one to be found. Uh, so these, uh, a lot of these cabbages, some vegetables, you really have to be check them every day and as soon as the seed starts ripening start collecting or you'll lose it. Okay so uh, a lot of the seed we want to collect very often is daisy family uh, which produce nearly all of them seeds a little bit like the familiar dandelion, very small seeds that have these feathery attachments that enable them to float away on the wind. Uh, so when we collect seed from daisies we need to be uh, perhaps a little bit quicker off the mark and uh, getting that seed out and um, getting that uh, into a bag before, before it all floats away. Uh, so here we've got rue, Ruta graviolans, a uh, little Mediterranean shrub, very drought tolerant, tolerant plant, good, good foliage plant. And we've got these very obvious seed capsules uh, and I'm going to be doing pretty much the standard practice really in so many cases is just cutting off uh, and then just tipping upside down into a bag, a paper bag, which will absorb moisture and to allow those seed heads to dry out because getting seed capsules to dry out is really important. Uh, moisture in storage is one of the main reasons why seeds die. So seed collecting, the crucial material is paper, paper bags and envelopes. Uh, paper absorbs moisture so it allows the seeds to dry which is never going to happen with plastic. It's really important that when you collect seeds they are dried out really thoroughly. The reason is that any moisture is likely to encourage fungal diseases which will then cause the seeds to rot. Uh, it's also more likely that uh, the little insects that sometimes get uh, trapped in seed or, or perhaps eating the seed are less likely to survive if the seed is dried 
inside out thoroughly. Uh, but to actually collect uh, these kind of uh, margarine tubs and yogurt tubs, they're, they're quite useful just simply for collecting. But as soon as a seed is collected, it needs to go into, into paper. Uh, so really the bigger the seed head, the bigger the, the bag you need. So um, these paper, uh, strong paper bags are really useful. If you're doing a lo lot of really big seed heads then uh, the uh, potato sacks, paper potato sacks are probably the best thing. And uh, seed, when we've gathered it, generally goes upside down in the bag and as it dries out uh, the seed usually falls out of the capsule and ends up at the bottom of the bag, so it's quite easy to sort. Uh, when it comes to sorting seed, uh, a lot depends on what you're going to be using it for. If you're going to be uh, sending the seed off to a seed exchange or taking part in a, in a seed swap, for example, you really want to clean it as much as possible, uh, which uh, can be a bit time consuming. Um, commercially it's done with sieves, uh, but getting sieves of the right sizes is, is not easy. Uh, so that's only going to work for a few things. Uh, if the seed is purely for your own purposes, particularly if you're collecting a lot of seed, say annuals, things like marigolds and larkspur and love in the mist for wide distribution or wildflower seed, then to be honest you don't really need to sort it that carefully. Um, so here for example we've got uh, I've just pulled the heads off uh, calendula, English marigold, and we've got a right old mix of the seeds and the odd bits of all the structures around. Um, but I'm not going to bother sorting that uh, because this is going in straight in, into the ground um, and it's, it's, it's unnecessary. So sorting seed does require separating seed from the seed pods. Uh, simply banging uh, seed heads against the side of a bucket can be one very simple, effective way. Uh, smaller quantities of seed can very often be effectively sorted by running a piece of card uh, over the seed on a flat surface. Uh, then there's the traditional practice used for wheat, which is winnowing, uh, throwing the seed up in a gentle breeze, blowing away the chaff, and the heavier seed falls back down. Okay, a couple of little refinements about sorting seed. Um, I use, we use uh, this wooden frame, uh, which I think is part of an old drawer. It just helps keep everything uh, in place. Um, and then these big rolls of cheap paper you can, you can get hold of, preferably white, because uh, most seed is brown or black and it'll sharp against it and it just helps keep everything in one place and st stops you losing seed or making a mess of wherever you're working. And then uh, for most seed quantities these little uh, envelopes which you can uh, pick up from many stationers are absolutely perfect. Labelling is really important and if you're going to be keeping the seed for any period of time perhaps making a note of the date you collected it as well.